Welcome to Conversations with William M. Hoffman. I'm William M. Hoffman. Conversations is Lehman College's series of discussions with major theater and musical figures of our time. I am currently on leave, so I've asked my producer, Jerry Barnard, to take over as host for this show. I'll be back with you shortly. Until then, enjoy. <laughs> Welcome to Conversations. I'm Jerry Bernard. Usually as the producer, I can be found on the other side of the camera. But today, in the first of a two-part series, Bill has graciously allowed me to present this show with two of the amazingly talented stars of Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812. Welcome to Conversations, Amber Gray and Lucas Steele. Thank, Thank you. you. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you here. I have to tell my own personal story because I went to see this show when it was still running under the high line and uh, I was like bowled over. I didn't know what to expect. I mm -hmm. had no perceived notion. The only thing I knew it was based on Tolstoy's War and Peace mm -hmm. and that I was going to get to see this musical. And so I walked in and found myself in a Russian restaurant. Yeah. I really, really felt like I had just walked into the Russian tea room or some Russian tea room in 1812 or yeah. something. And I sat down and all of a sudden food appeared. And I'm going, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you know, this is nice, but is there a show? You know, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, then, uh, you know, we had a chance to order things and then the uh, waiters and waitresses, well, the waitresses, there were only waitresses at the time. I don't know yeah. if that's yes. still true. No, that's Beautiful and, true. Russian waitresses. Yes, and I, waitress. I and, and I said to one of them, I said, what's your name? And she said, Veron Natasha Svetlana. <laughs> so I figured, okay, I was at home. And they were Russian. They mm -hmm. were really Russian yeah. and spoke Russian, and I was like bowled over. <laughs> And then, I, you know, you notice little things, musicians all over the place. And then the show starts, but you're not quite sure it's starting because the actors are with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the show and how you got involved with it and whose concept was this and who made it like this? Sure. Hmm. You first or me first? You first. Okay, well I think from the, the onset they really tried to create as much of an authentic environment that they can. It was very important to Dave Malloy, our composer, um, and Rachel Chavkin, our director. Uh, most importantly to Dave being, he's of Latvian, I believe. There's Latvian descent. I didn't um, know he had taken many trips to Russia mm -hmm. uh, and sort of wanted it to feel as unique and authentic as possible. So I, I love that a lot of our staff is Russian. You know, it's kind of all fostering that feeling of you are in for an, an experience that though we are Americans, we have really sort of done as much research as possible to make this feel authentic for you. Um, the concept, uh, you know, again, to talk about the amazing room that you walked into, Mimi Lian, our set designer, Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. To design a, an entire room 
that is the set. It's not just a proscenium that she's dealing with, sort of a limited amount of space, but an entire very large room that is designed impeccably at every turn. You know, I've been to other theatrical performances which tend to try to involve the audience, but it never worked like this for me. It mm -hmm. never was all-encompassing. I felt I was part of the show. You know, I felt that, you know, we could have, anything we did was all right with everybody. How do you feel about it, Amber? Well, I agree with you. I've been to a lot of those immersive uh, performances where they sort of force you to participate. I think that's where it gets a bit dicey because, mm -hmm. you know, the audience isn't always wanting to participate. So with our show, it's happening around you, so you can be as involved as you would like to be, which I think is nice. So people feel welcome to either dive in deep or just kind of like get their toes wet, yeah. which is good, I think. I I don't like shows where I feel put upon. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, I didn't neither feel do put we. Upon. Yeah. So we invite you, and you do not have to accept the invitation. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's fun as a performer because it certainly keeps it fresh. Like we have, we are with the audience, so it does feel like a different show. I mean, show. more so than any other production, you actually do interact with yeah. the audience. Yeah. I mean, Lucas sat down at my table, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think that's where it's a unique challenge as an actor as well, Absolutely. of going through this process of having no choice but to be present in the room and deal with what is actually happening around you, while at the same time being truthful to your character's mm. objectives. You know, there's a very interesting multitasking that's going on. I would find mm -hmm. it, you know, definitely a challenge, you know, yes. to be both to be both things at the same time. And I had been in St. Petersburg, Russia, not Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was going to St. Petersburg, somebody said Florida? I said no, <laughs> Russia, um, <laughs> a, a couple of years before, and it took me right back, you know, I was mm. just right there. Oh, I was just great. waiting to bring out the samovar, you know, I mean, it was, it was absolutely yeah. wonderful. We have some stills from the show, okay. so uh, let's start showing the stills, okay. and you guys feel free to comment on them. Okay. This is the first shot. Yeah, this is Casino. This yes. is the inside of Casino, which is actually, from the outside, looks like a tent. Um, but it's a very fancy tent. <laughs> and again, our, our set designer, she, as you can see, just, I don't even, I think there's over a hundred paintings that are up just on the walls alone. Mm -hmm. And the van of Napoleon, yes. yes exactly. <laughs> of course, it was crucial <laughs> to anyone who knows about war and peace. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. um, let's continue. So there's some of the food being served. Yeah. You know, which would amazed me because it was all, all authentic Russian food. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was just waiting for the savruga caviar. Um, yeah, they really wanted to create an experience. It was. You know, that was part of the, they wanted a, a fine sort of theater going experience. Downtown, you know, since the production is previously transferred, um, there's still option for food and whatnot. Right. But yeah. it's more of a, a smaller, you know, a la carte situation. Yeah, it was, it was quite amazing to me because I've never felt so happy to be inside of a production, which is exactly oh, what it felt like. Right. Let's see, let's continue. Okay. <laughs> um, now, the, the, what, I'm trying to remind, this reminded me of a story, oh, that I told a story about <laughs> Svetlana and Natasha already, yeah. yes. So that's the restaurant. I think they, this is, the room feels much more enclosed. I think they enhanced the lighting for these photos a bit. But uh, I know I felt completely in an authentic restaurant and everything, and the lighting was phenomenal and mm -hmm. all the things. Well, I think that's one of the amazing tricks as well, is that it is, it is a large space that we're in, but they have managed through lighting and through the set design to, to still create this intimate experience, right. which yeah. was important at mm -hmm. Ars Nova you know, to transfer. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that transfer in a, mi in a minute. <laughs> um, okay, c let's just continue through. I just ah, wanted, now, uh, who do we recognize <laughs> there? Who is that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is uh, our uh, famous Lucas playing. This is Anatole, Anatole. Karagin. Yes. Anatole, he, he, now the interesting thing, Anatole, <laughs> is that you get to sing your way through the entire production, but don't really have a song. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's been a, a, 
a challenge I've gladly accepted in this piece of kind of finding a way to define who he is uh, and make him well-rounded mm -hmm. through actually quite little mm -hmm. music. You know, and I don't want to say I'm not singing at all because I am, but every other major character does have a song of their own, which I think speaks sort of volumes about their character and who right. that person is. Mm. And it's been a yes, you talked about quite right, a yes, yes. Yeah. But I mean, she does a lot of a lot of the, lot of the yeah. plot line revolves around your character. Yes, so, I mean it's, it's really it's interesting integral to the whole thing, and you're yeah. in and out of everywhere. But you know, you don't you don't stop to pause to sing anything in, 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 quite individually. But yeah. Yeah. it's a wonderful it's wonderful what you do add to it. He's definitely, uh, he creates a lot of action in the piece. Right. Everything is with other people, you know, mm -hmm. sort of motivating this to happen. Right. And Well, let's yeah. get through these stills because sure. we have so many fun things to do. <laughs> ah, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> That's Natasha. That is <laughs> Natasha That's and kiss. Anatole in the kiss, which went on for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I thought they were enjoying themselves a bit too much. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> and there's Natasha. Yes, mm -hmm. there's Philippa Sue. Um, Natasha. Uh, Philippa Sue, who I believe is very, very youthful. She's very youthful. <laughs> Yeah. Let me put it yes. politely. Yeah. She yeah. is young and she's yeah. kind of new to all this a bit. Mm. She, she's been out of school what, a year? Yeah, I mean, this is the first job she booked out of school. Yeah. So, well, yeah. It's wonderful and she does a yeah. fabulous job mm -hmm. and she has yeah. a lovely, lovely voice mm -hmm. and a great countenance. Let's, fi let's keep going. Uh huh, okay. More rabble rousing. Yes. Crazy <laughs> moment. It's true. Keep going. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there she is. There she is. <laughs> Helene. <laughs> yes. Helene Bezikova. Yes, who has half the great lines in the show. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this is Andre and this is Pierre. Right. Um, of the previously mentioned title, Natasha Pierre. Right. Mm -hmm. Pierre would be on your right, played by David Abelis. Right. And that's Blake DeLong as Andre. Thank you. Mm. Okay. And this is a costume shot, basically, a publici publicity shot of you in your Anatole dig, uh, reg regalia. Yeah. This is from, do you want to talk a little about this? This was yeah, during I, Ars Nova time? Or? No, this was after, this was at Cagino, uh -huh. uh, downtown at the Highline where you saw right. it. Chance Magazine, they're a newer publication, and this is their second edition. Uh, this one's entitled The Box. I think it actually is focused around the box, which is downtown. And um, they they feature a few shows. And yeah, it's all about Paloma Young's beautiful costumes. Yes, and let's see the next one, which I said to you a few moments ago, that looks like a Vermeer painting. <laughs> it is stunning. It is it gorgeous. Is stunning. It's just yeah. perfect. So, it's gorgeous. Yeah. now that we've talked about this, um, one thing I loved, the first thing that set me off got with the show that just like said, okay, I'm, I'm hooked, yeah. was the song you sing in the very beginning in which you basically tell everybody what, who, what all, who all the characters are and yeah. what to expect of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this character never appears in the show. You know, and and uh, this character is you know who, and and, and it's very funny because it's repeated in the program, and you repeat it a few times while yes. you're going along. It's just like, okay, we're going to take you, drop you in the middle of Tolstoy. Yes, uh, it's like uh, 80 to 100 pages somewhere in the middle of Tolstoy's yeah. War and Peace, and they drop you in the middle of it, and they say, well, we got to get the we got to get the audience to understand where these characters are mm -hmm. coming from. So you sing about it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It's sort of the cliff notes. Yeah, exactly. It's the cliff notes yeah. version. Yeah. To make sort of everybody feel calm. I think people get intimidated by the idea of a war and peace opera. I mean, that sounds very daunting. Yeah. Yes. Because so I think some people in. also, they, the ones that even know that they are in for war and peace, mm. you know, they, they're a little more prepared for that idea. 
but I think some people that arrive and then realize that it's a little yeah, it's a little jar. You know, yeah. it's one of the most difficult reads of all time. It's a thousand-page <laughs> tome. Someone called it. Someone called it the the doorstop of the book. You mm -hmm. know, basically. Sure. But to many people, it's one of the greatest pieces of literature mm -hmm. in the world. You know, uh, and funny story about that opening number was that when we were doing previous readings and whatnot, the, the feedback that came back to the composer was, oh, I don't know who anyone is. Everybody has so many names. Everyone has nine different names. So <laughs> Dave, Broke you know, a tiny bit <laughs> out of wonderful <laughs> spite, <laughs> wrote this song yes. that just laid it all out. Mm. Yeah, I think he has a uh, pixie sense of humor, actually, because <laughs> there are a lot of things in the show that are like that. Well, Amber, you actually have a song that you sing entirely in the show. Yes. And that you're going to favor us with now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, my enchantress, oh, you beautiful thing, charming, charming, oh, this is really beyond. Straight from Paris, anything suits you, my charmer. Oh, how she blushes, how she blushes, my pretty. Oh, how she blushes, how she blushes, my pretty. Shamante, shamante. You are such a lovely thing. Where have you been? It's such a shame to be. Shamante, shamante, charming. Such a shame to bury pearls in the country. 
grocery shamante shamante charming That was incredible, darling. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Well, one thing I love is uh, the um, subtext. You know, oh. I remembered. I, now you just reminded me that when I was watching the show, I said, "Everybody's got their own their own agenda. Everybody's got their own subtext in this mm. show." So tell us a little bit about that song, particular. Well, Helene has just been asked by her brother Anatole to invite Natasha to dinner. So that number is basically my seduction of Natasha, you know, inviting her over to a ball at her house where the magic will happen, where hopefully they will fall for each other. So you're weaving the web so I'm he can be the spider. I'm weaving the web, <laughs> exactly. That's right, yeah, it's perfectly put. Yes, mm -hmm. which would be fine if I were not already married. <laughs> yes. <laughs> details, details. Right, yeah. There's little details, but we'll yes. worry about it. They're very, it's a very, their relationship is past traditional sense, I think, of what people normally think of brother and sister. Mm. Yeah, it's a little Tennessee Williams. Yeah. It is a little Tennessee Williams, yeah. yes. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, just the way we've sort of, I think, with our director, Rachel Chapt, and, and also ourselves, mm. I, I, there's a similar style of acting. I think we both approach the material the same way. Mm. Um, which I'm so honored to have her as my sister every night. I mean, to look into her eyes, there mm -hmm. are a hundred stories going on in her <laughs> eyes. Anytime you look at her, that's great. It's you, absolutely you incredible. Got the backstory, the understory, the subtext, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Well, Lucas, you, I understand, have a song for us that's kind of in the vein of, uh, of <laughs> Natasha Pierre. Well, I'm, I'm reaching a little on that, but <laughs> with that said, <laughs> I sort of look at this. Anatole comes to an end. Um, in through the rest of War and Peace, which is not not a good end <laughs> at all. Um, and I sort of feel I, I use, you know, for myself each night, there's a moment when we look up at the comet at the end of the show, and it's, a, it's sort of your life flashing before your eyes and everything that happened. And mm. um, I like to believe, this is a little out of the reality of the book, but the Natasha was sort of the beginning of the end for him, and that she kind of ruined him in this mm. way of being obsessed with this thing that he was so close to having but could not have. Um, and she ruined him. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hence. Well, hence the title of the next <laughs> yeah. song. Yeah. Lucas will perform for us, Ruined. Like you in my blood. Yeah, 
Thank you so much. I, I bother being jealous, but I can't even get close to it to be <laughs> jealous about. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was exquisite. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I've always had a voice of an angel, and um, even if you got a little devilish. So yeah, I get to be a little bit of a devil this yes, time. Yes, I so. know. I know. So um, we're running to the end of this show. Uh, so any last comments for our audience on this show? But we'll pick up on show two. But anything you'd like to say regarding, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you more about when you started and the whole thing in the show too, but mm -hmm. anything more you wanted to say about it? Oh yeah, my big question. Mm. What happens to the show? You have a limited <laughs> engagement. <laughs> <laughs> Do, we uh, Do we know anything? Yes. We don't, we don't. you know, it's yeah. sort of a, actors are sort of respectfully always the last people to know what's going on. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of... Business political you moves. You could possibly have a life, so why bother? <laughs> you know, telling you. Uh, yeah, but there, it, it would seem that that good things are in order. Yeah. You know, it, as, aside from that, to work on something like this, start this project over a year ago when it, you know, was a baby in the developmental yeah. process. Mm -hmm. To have, we celebrated our 200th show this wow. weekend. Wow. Four days ago, yeah. From Ars Nova to downtown to here. Not even including Ars Nova. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just so the audience knows, very quickly, I'm mm. going to read some of the blurbs from the reviews from this show. <laughs> <laughs> we could hide from Vibrant <laughs> transporting new musical. Mm -hmm. Christopher Fisher with New York Times. <laughs> Rousing music and ravishing performance as a feast for the eyes and the ears. The Daily News. A ravishing, joyous affair. This is theater like no other in New York. Time Out New York. Ingenious, a sensational and singular production. Entertainment Weekly. Inventive, ravishing, and full-on romantic. The New York Post. Thrilling, a feast for the senses, a daring piece of theater. The Associated Press. <laughs> I'd never come out in public again. <laughs> I, I'd be too embarrassed. I'd have to live uh, up to that. You yeah. know? No, it's, we're, we're all very grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I say I would say you had amazing reviews, amazing performances, an amazing show, amazing experience because it is an experience. It's not just a show. Yes. Anyway, I thank you both so much for being on Conversations, and I thank our studio and home audience also. We look forward to to seeing you in part two of Conversations. Thank you very much. <laughs>